What's going on, everybody? Our Joe Ochoa here from SB Nation's bloggingtheboys.com. We hope all is well wherever you are. We hope you're happy, safe, healthy, and that all of your brackets are in perfectly fine order still, that nobody destroyed it, nobody busted it. Lots of fun things happening throughout March Madness. You cannot necessarily call what the Dallas Cowboys have done in free agency March Madness, but nevertheless, we're here to talk about what America's team has been up to as the first week of free agency is now in the books. It is Sunday, March 21st, 2021, so we will see see what week two has in store for Dallas. Typically, this is when they start to, um, I don't want to say spend a little bit more, but when they start to get a little bit more involved, obviously lots of bargains out there to be found. And to be fair, uh, to the credit of the Dallas Cowboys, they kind of did find one that's worth talking about. Let's go ahead and do that. On Saturday, the Dallas Cowboys found a new, you can call it a safety, but really a new weak side linebacker in Keanu Neal. This was um, not extremely predictable, but very predictable in that Keanu Neal obviously played for Dan Quinn, new Dallas Cowboys defensive coordinator with the Atlanta Falcons. Keanu Neal is somebody who has seen, you know, injuries derail, obviously, his NFL career over the last couple of years, but still has a lot of athleticism, still very young, somebody who can really, um, really, really flash, I think, in this particular defense that Dan Quinn is going to coach up with the Dallas Cowboys. Now, it's important to note that this is a one-year deal worth $5 million, and this kind of works for everybody's benefit. Obviously, you know, Keanu Neal wants to get back to the open market, wants to be regarded as one of the NFL's premier defensive players he obviously I think you know we talk about this all the time needs a place where he can go he can play for a season hopefully have a great year and then next year especially when the salary cap booms because of all the television money coming in and the 17th game that is likely going to be added for every NFL team you know maybe it's a market that benefits Keanu Neal so the Cowboys are kind of his means to an end where on the Dallas side of things we know that they don't like to commit to big time free agents we know that they don't like to spend a lot of money they get one year of a player who has played at some high level before and a coach in Dan Quinn who knows how to use him properly. What's more is that if all this works to that same uh, idea that we're kind of painting right here, the way it has for a couple of different players, Robert Quinn isn't an example because the Cowboys traded for him, but if Keanu Neal plays well for the Dallas Cowboys, obviously they will benefit from that on the field. But what's more is if he gets paid by some other team next year in free agency when the salary cap rises and all that jazz, the Dallas Cowboys could be looking at a 2023 compensatory pick and we all know how much the Dallas Cowboys love their comp pick. So one year, $5 million for Keanu Neal. And again, look, safety is what he's listed as. And I think it's important to note that he is going to play weak side linebacker for Dan Quinn. You can see him here picking off a Sammy Watkins pass, of all people, in 2020, getting tackled by Patrick Mahomes. Look, he's got great instincts, great defensive player, obviously needs to stay healthy, obviously needs to stay on the field. But something that I think a lot of people should be excited about, especially if he does generate turnovers. Now, the thing that I think we can look forward to the most with Keanu Neal is the way that Dan Quinn is going to utilize him again as a weak side linebacker. You see him here taking down Matthew Stafford, now a member of the Los Angeles Rams. This can be very cool. This can be awesome. This can be something that the Dallas Cowboys use on a consistent basis with Keanu Neal, given his explosiveness, given the way he can get after the quarterback. This is what we want to see week in and week out next season. So welcome Keanu Neal. I don't think he can wear number 22 with the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, so we'll see what number he ultimately ends up going with. Since he's going to be a weak side linebacker, I don't know that he goes with a secondary number. Maybe he goes with a 40s number. Um, I don't know. That's a very important subject, but we'll get to that when we obviously get to it. Now, Keanu Neal, not the only member of Dan Quinn's past teams that has a connection to the Dallas Cowboys in the here and now, you know that DeMonte KZ is somebody who has been linked to the Dallas Cowboys because you've been paying attention here. Make sure you do subscribe to the Blog of the Boys YouTube channel. We put out videos all the time. We have live streams. We do film reviews, lots of fun stuff like that. But we've been telling you it's been reported that DeMonte KZ is set to visit with the Dallas Cowboys this coming week. This is somebody who the Dallas Cowboys will legitimately use in the secondary if that is where things ultimately land in terms of him joining the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I'm not super pumped about this, honestly. Um, the Keanu Neal thing I'm excited by, but um, this is this is just something out there. I think this is just something that's percolating out there. Um, and, and again, you know, we talked about this in one of our recent videos. These were predictable things, right? Keanu Neal, as mentioned, wants to take a route that he knows because he wants to get back to the open market next year. So that's why it makes sense for Keanu Neal not just to play for the Dallas Cowboys in a brand and a team that's seen all over the world, but play for a coach and play in a defense that he knows very well under Dan Quinn. The same could be said for DeMonte KZ, but these were very predictable things. It was extremely 
fully predictable that the Dallas Cowboys would go after former players, former disciples of Dan Quinn. They haven't gone after, at least you know, to the moment we're talking here, to date, haven't been connected to Richard Sherman of all people. But um, these, again, I, I'm just, I'm not particularly excited by this because this. This was kind of predictable. Now, this one I am very excited by. The Dallas Cowboys, it was reported on Friday, are also set to visit with Malik Hooker this coming week. Now, this is somebody that I think is worth, you know, clapping your hands, throwing your hands up in the air, maybe having a party if this ultimately does happen. Malik Hooker tore his Achilles last September. The Indianapolis Colts chose not to pick up his fifth-year option, so that ended his time with the team. And I think that that's a really similar... um, archetype, for lack of a better word, that the Dallas Cowboys could go after. Kind of like Keanu Neal. Hey, Malik Hooker, come play for us. It's a one-year deal. Next year, you get back to the salary cap. All this stuff, the same stuff we already talked about here, and gives you an opportunity to kind of check off a lot of boxes. Malik Hooker is somebody that has elite safety potential in terms of inner talent. And that is... Look, the DeMonte KZ thing, who does have some cornerback flexibility, by the way, but Malik Hooker would be a true investment at the safety position, which is why this excites me the most. Now, obviously, the Cowboys have Donovan Wilson, and I don't want to poo-poo that. I've talked before, though, how it would not be responsible to Dallas Cowboys to just completely trust Donovan Wilson. The point we've been saying all along throughout free agency is the Cowboys need to bring in some legitimate competition. From an overall perspective in the safety department, Malik Hooker represents that. Malik Hooker represents legitimate growth in terms of identifying that the safety position needs resources. So this is very exciting, but obviously the longer the Cowboys go without getting him, the more we're all going to start to sweat. So Cowboys, get this thing done with Malik Hooker. You know, you've been connected to safeties that have worn the number 29 before. Don't leave us hanging like you did for so long with Earl Thomas. By the way, I have to imagine the Dallas Cowboys have spoken extensively to Indianapolis defensive coach Matt Eberflus, who was the former uh, defensive coordinator, you know, not in name, but in terms of general title with the Dallas Cowboys before he left for the Colts to work for Josh McDaniels, which ended up becoming Frank Reich. So, um, hey, fingers crossed. Let's hope this Malik Hooker, uh, let's hope this Malik Hooker thing happens. It's it's Sunday. Um, I'm all tongue-tied. I did not have Illinois winning in my bracket, but for those of you that did, I apologize. I can feel the emotion. Now, something that did not happen to the Cowboys specifically, but something that we should talk about, the New York Giants have a new wide receiver. Now, this is interesting in that Kenny Galladay chose the Giants. Um why would you do that uh, is my question. But Kenny Galladay had been linked to the Chicago Bears and they ended up placing the franchise tag on Allen Robinson. He ended up signing it. So it seems like Chicago and Andy Dalton will seemingly go that route in 2021. I personally thought that Galladay would be somebody to end up with the Colts, the team we just talked about. Maybe go help out Carson Wentz, maybe go to Baltimore, play with Lamar Jackson. But I can't imagine why he would join the New York Giants on a four-year, $72 million deal. Maybe the $72 million has a lot to do with it. We have seen so far that the wide receiver market isn't exactly something that blew up this offseason. Juju Smith-Schuster went back to the Pittsburgh Steelers on a one-year deal. We have yet to see where other dominoes are going to fall, but... Kenny Galladay to the Giants. Um, Look, I don't want to say this is to Daniel Jones, what Amari Cooper was to Dak Prescott, but um, this does give the Giants offense a legitimate alpha wide receiver, which is concerning because they do play in the same division as the Cowboys. I wrote about this on Sunday at blogontheboys.com, asking if Galladay is the best non-Cowboys wide receiver in the NFC East. I think that the answer is still no, just uh, out of deference to Washington's Terry McLaurin, but they are very different types of receivers. Terry McLaurin, some that can separate one of the better route runners in the NFL. Kenny Galladay, not necessarily a great route runner, not going to work you underneath, but is an incredible possession wide receiver. Somebody who once you get into the red zone and kind of throw up these 50-50 balls and hope he comes down with them. That is really his specialty. Um, Very Des Bryant-like in that capacity. And I think that that is something that the Cowboys should see and say, well, you know what? We need some defensive help. We need some help in the secondary. So either way, I'm not particularly fearful of Kenny Galladay with the New York Giants, but it's it does say that they are at least somewhat invested in improving Daniel Jones's stock. And remember that the Giants lost running back Saquon Barkley for a majority of last season. So we're talking about a New York offense that is coordinated by Jason Garrett, of all people, that will feature Daniel Jones, will feature Kenny Galladay, will feature Saquon Barkley. Don't forget about Sterling Shepard or Evan Ingram. The Giants low-key have a little bit to work with there. I think we just kind of look at the surface and laugh. Um, I'm, I'm not, again, incredibly nervous about them, but on paper, there is there's something to like about that New York Giants offense. So we will see how that ultimately ends up turning out. Now, this doesn't necessarily impact the Dallas Cowboys, except because 
Everything does. It does. Kyle Fuller was released by the Denver Broncos, goodness gracious, by the Chicago Bears. Uh, you know, hey, it's Sunday. We're working through this. Was released by the Bears on Saturday. It was reported late last week that this was ultimately going to be the case. Chicago thought about maybe trading him before they officially released him, but that did not happen either. So Fuller was released on Saturday and very shortly after had a new home in the Denver Broncos. You will remember, of course, because you are a brilliant NFL fan, that the Denver Broncos head coach is Vic Fangio, who used to be the defensive coordinator with the Chicago Bears. So somebody kind of like the Dan Quinn situation with Keanu Neal that Kyle Fuller knows well. It is a one-year deal for Fuller, so we will see where he ends up next offseason. This has been a very popular thing for NFL free agents to take the one-year deal, hit the open market once again next year after that TV cash comes in. Now, I know that you were probably upset. I was upset that Kyle Fuller joined the Denver Broncos and not the Dallas Cowboys. By the way, the Cowboys do host the Broncos this coming season. And I do think there's a silver lining, maybe a silver and blue lining if you want to go, uh, you know, for that effect. But while it sucks that the Cowboys aren't necessarily out here improving their secondary in legitimate fashion, no disrespect again to Keanu Neal playing all over the place as a hybrid, but uh, it would have been great to see the Cowboys bring in Kyle Fuller, but him landing with the Denver Broncos is really maybe the best non-Cowboys place that he could have wound up. Why is that? Well, let's take a look at the 2021 NFL draft order. The first eight picks, I know that you know by heart. The Jaguars, Jets, Dolphins, shout out Houston Texans and Bill O'Brien, Atlanta Falcons, Cincinnati Bengals, Philadelphia Eagles, Detroit Lions, and Carolina Panthers will make their first eight selections in about, I don't know, five or so weeks, um, you know, doing some quick mental math there. But the Denver Broncos will be on the clock with the ninth overall pick. Why does that matter? Because the Dallas Cowboys hold the 10th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. What is the whole deal here, RJ? What are you getting at? Well, what I'm getting at is we have seen some mocks. We have seen some talk that the Dallas Cowboys could maybe, you know, see nine offensive players go off the board before they pick. That would be awesome, right? Like, that would be super cool. Um, I know that there is a contingency of Cowboys fans who wants to see the team take Florida tight end Kyle Pitts. That would be a lot of fun in some different ways. But if you told me that every defensive player was on the board at 10th overall, I would say two things. Number one, great. Number two, I don't know why I went thumb for number one. I felt so weird. Reminds me of that scene uh, in whatever movie it was. But either way, uh, if there are only excuse me if all offensive players have gone before the Dallas Cowboys pick I would say number one cool number two trade back you want to get back there you want to move back you want to trade back why is that because there are two cornerbacks that I think we can all be satisfied all settle ourselves with when it's all said and done you have Alabama's Patrick Sertain and you have of course who could forget Virginia Tech's Caleb Farley not a great weekend for Virginia Tech all things considered but Caleb Farley still somebody to be proud of now if they're both on the board at 10 overall it does give the Cowboys some room to think about things to trade back pick up more capital they already have 10 picks in the 2021 nfl draft pick up more then you can trade around you can move up when you want to move up remember the cowboys moved up last year in the fourth round of draft tyler biotish out of wisconsin who's playing against baylor as i sit here and record this with you i'm going to go out on a limb and say that the badgers pull off the upset it's been that kind of tournament so far but um that's the whole point is kyle fuller ending up with the denver broncos means that the broncos are likely out on cornerback when it comes to the ninth overall pick which gives the Cowboys more options. That's what we want to see. We want to see the Cowboys have as many options as possible. That is the buzzword that we want to identify when it comes to the 10th overall pick. Options. 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 Not talking stock, talking NFL draft. And for what it's worth, maybe the Cowboys are in love with a different cornerback. There is, of course, J.C. Horn, who had a very interesting tweet. I wanted to make sure you saw this on Saturday. Quoted a tweet um, with a couple of photos, said Frisco, Texas living with the fire emoji, which seemingly indicates, uh, you know, that it's fire, it's cool, it's awesome, whatever, I'm hip. Uh, and J.C. Horn quoted the tweet with the heart eyes emoji. I can't, like, let me see if I can do that with my face. Like, right? Like, is that it? Like, nah, that's not, that's a, that's a different emoji. But the point being, J.C. Horn seemingly is down with the idea of living in Frisco, Texas. Huh. I wonder what Frisco, Texas is, if not the home of the Dallas Cowboys and where they train at the star in Frisco. So the point here is that Kyle Fuller ending up with the Denver Broncos means that the Broncos are not going to be interested at cornerback with the ninth overall pick, which means that the Cowboys are going to have more options than we already thought, which conceivably is a great thing. So while you're bummed that Kyle Fuller is not a member of the Dallas Cowboys, just remember that he wound up in just about the best place that he could that wasn't 
at Frisco, where J.C. Horn seemingly wants to live. So uh, that about does it. In fact, no, that doesn't do it. Let me make sure you are fully caught up. Let's look at where the Dallas Cowboys stand here. Now, in terms of, let's start with departures. Um, the Cowboys have lost a number of different players, although I don't think there's anybody here that you are really, truly heartbroken about. We've talked about a number of these already. Cam Irving, Carolina, Joe Thomas, Houston, Chidabe Wuze, Cincinnati, Andy Dalton, formerly Cincinnati, now Chicago, as mentioned. Chris Jones was released. Blake Bell had back to Kansas City. Marcus Henry, Cole Hikatini, John V. Johnson, and Chris Lacey were waived at the end of the week. The Cowboys have brought back a number of players, lots of special teams emphasis here. Noah Brown, Cedric Wilson, and Antoine Woods are both tendered. C.J. Goodwin, the special teams ace, of course. Jordan Lewis uh, gives the Cowboys more options to go back to that word at the cornerback position. They now, I think, you know, we've said it several times, they need one more before they enter the NFL draft. We'll see who that is. I know that you want it to be Richard Sherman. Time will tell. Malik Turner is, of course, coming back. And as it stands, the Dallas Cowboys have made a couple of outside additions that are worth talking about. Jake McQuaid, Ty Nasecki, the new swing tackle, Brent Urban, Carlos Watkins. We also have Terrell Basham, you know, one to just consider, not to necessarily be overly hyped about. And now you can add Keanu Neal to that list. So the Dallas Cowboys are busy, I, I guess you could say. Um, I, I, I know that you might laugh at that. You might joke. You might have a line or two to say, but the Dallas Cowboys have done a few things. The Cowboys have brought in technically two interior defensive linemen in Carlos Watkins and Brent Urban. They brought in a edge rush option in Terrell Basham, and now they have a hybrid defensive potential superstar player in Keanu Neal. That is very cool to see. So we want to see them do more, and hopefully they will. Hopefully this week brings with it a lot more players for us to jump on here and talk about, and I can promise you that if the Dallas Cowboys have some action going on, whatever the Dallas uh, Dallas Cowboys have going on, we will be here to talk about it. Make sure you subscribe to the Blog and the Boys YouTube channel. We put out videos all the time. Our number one goal, and it's important that you know this, our number one goal goal is to make sure that you are caught up and informed and enjoying talking about the Dallas Cowboys because that's our favorite thing and it is the coolest thing in the world that we get to share that that we have it in common so the Dallas Cowboys uh hopefully uh you know make us all happy you know that's that's the goal right is is to have all this make us happy and so um hopefully the Cowboys get to work this week and we're sitting here Monday Tuesday whatever the case may be and celebrating in fact maybe next time you know we'll clink glasses or whatever the case may be so uh do me a favor and uh like I said subscribe here to the blog and the boys YouTube channel check out blogandtheboys.com we have uh, articles coming out constantly make sure you subscribe to the blog and the boys podcast network we have different shows that come out every single day we have a two-time super bowl champion on our podcast roster and tony casillas who i saw had his first hole in one ever on sunday so congratulations to tony i'm sure he will tell us the story on tuesday's episode of the 750 uh what am i forgetting here uh let's see here oh yeah do me a favor and have the absolute best day of all time You know why? Because you deserve it. We'll see you next time.